totally normal things happening. I feel like Santa Claus just arrived. Is there anything in there? I don't think so. I think they're gone. Finally. We can finally take the Christmas lights off the top of this thing. I actually had debated leaving them on all year because when these are on, they are beautiful. Like, just magical. But that white cord sticks out an awful lot. There we go. Now I can get that fixed up. I don't feel like doing that today, though. That's a big project. I don't want to. So refreshing. It is an absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous day. It's not very warm, but it's better than the weekend. Guys, it got down to like 43 last night. It was freezing, but made for really good fun laser parties in the swimming pool. It was a very extreme deviation, wasn't it? That's just the way things go here. I hope everybody had a wonderful Mother's Day, made for a fun weekend, and my birthday was on Mother's Day this year, so that was always fun, which means, of course, birthdays mean plants, so we'll get to a little plant haul later, but first, bigger things are happening today. You know, I'll put the timestamp things in if necessary, I won't know till the end of this vlog. But yeah, we're gonna have some stuff coming in, there's a truck that just pulled up, and a crane, because it's big things big things are coming gonna be uh, some palms i'm just gonna like drop them over here and then i'll move them around later but i'm gonna put one over there one over there and then um need to do something with this one right here that's better i told y'all i have a palm tree dealer old queen palms out and new one is in i wasn't going to put a new one in here everything's very backlit so i'm sorry about that the sun's not behaving behaving. I expect the sun to move its location for my video. So the palm tree dealer hooked me up with a really, really good deal on this palm tree. So I was like, you know what? Okay. That wholesale cost. I mean, dirt cheap. Let's just go ahead and do it. In my head, I was thinking for the price and since, uh, you know, it's a burlap field dug plant, I was thinking uh, it'll probably just be like 15, 20 feet tall, maybe this time I'll be able to put a structure around it and, you know, attempt to keep it alive in the winter, but then they showed up with this guy, which is taller than my old queen palm that I had for many, many, many years. If you don't know, I used to have one for a long time. There's a, a local place out here, a service, where if your plants get too big, they'll come out and pick them up and put them in a greenhouse for you. And uh, I had a queen palm with them for many, many years, and eventually it got too big. It was largely the root mass. It was just kind of a dangerous thing to move around. So I couldn't do anything with it last year, and it had to go. It had had it for 14 years. I was kind of bummed about that, and then it, 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 just, it, it, it happened again. The nice trunk on it, it's not super full, but it's a field dug plant, so no shock there. The root mass on this one is much smaller than the old one, so I will, I'm not going to get into thinking about what I need to do with it over the winter time yet, but for now, I'm just gonna enjoy it. And then my other palm trees are here. These were all in storage over the winter time. Have a double trunk Adenidia, a Robolini, pygmy date palm, and a foxtail palm, and a very large Alexander palm, triple trunk that I've had for a really, really long time. It's grown a ton. I mean, a ton. This thing's gotten really big. That's They <laughs> used a crane to bring it over. I don't think they need to though, because I usually just have them take the plants and drop them here and I move them around myself. Not the queen palm, that's too big for me to do that with, but this guy, I went ahead and just moved it myself, which means they don't need the crane for it, but they had the crane for the queen palm. So they pulled out the old one and Drop this new one in place. And uh, I'm impressed. Did not think it was going to be this big. <coughs> she said. Dude, I know I just said that I wanted to not go into the winter protection plan just yet, because, I mean, it's only May. But while it's still fresh in my head, I do want to go ahead and put out there that I had thought about too late in the year, the queen palm, like, it had already, like, been through 13 degrees below zero Fahrenheit. So, but I was thinking, oh, I can take PVC pipes put them together with couplers and make a teepee around it and throw a heater down in there and that would have been great. This one's much taller than the old one. I mean, you can see if you compare it to the garage, I think it's actually taller. So I don't know if that's gonna be possible, but I want to remember that they actually make special clamps that'll snap on to PVC pipe that'll hold plastic or frost cloth or things in place. 
and I could do that very easily. It's just a matter of like, I think it might, it, she might be too big. I don't know. I don't know how tall my garage is, but she's bigger than that. But I want to make sure I had that out there in this video. So if I forget, I can reference back to it in the fall time. And as far as these other palms are concerned, the Adenidia and the Alexander are fine. The Robolini and the Foxtail need to be repotted, though, like, badly. Palm trees don't mind being root-bound, but this is a bit excessive. It's really hard to keep this guy hydrated last year, so it's time. It doesn't need to be a big bump up in potting size, like, and, and what am I, you know what I'm saying. And uh, the foxtail is really just low in its pot. I might even just be able to lift that one up a little bit and put some fresh soil in there and keep its nursery can because sometimes I'll sink that into the ground. So I don't care if the pot looks nice. I just, it, they need, they need more room to grow. And I only have one, two, three, four, five. I have about eight bags of potting soil left, so I'm definitely going to need to go get more. I'm going to try and work my way through this soil first, though. And I'd like to go ahead and get things potted up, planted around the base of this queen palm. Since I don't know its fate, I don't really want to go with perennials around it. I can off to the sides, but as far as this area goes, it will have to be dug up if it does die in the wintertime. I'm just going to go with annuals, so uh, I don't know. Let me think about this one. I haven't bothered. I'm not going to clean this up until I do more planting over here, and I want to grade this a little bit more because it just, that looks terrible. But, uh, you know, it's what they did, so that's I'll fix that. But, um... Because I figure there's just going to be more mess made when I'm planting stuff around in here. And this is cut filled in with a lot of mulch, so I want to maybe even get some garden soil. So maybe this should wait and I should do the other stuff first. What do you think? It doesn't, you're not, I can't wait for you to reply. I have to make up my own mind. Oh, it's going to be hard to see here, but remember I planted some Chinese fan palms in the same area last year? Still some green in here. And um, the stem, the center stem... Still in there sturdy, at least on that trunk right there. Probably not on all of them. Yeah, see that one pulled up. But um, that does mean that once the heat gets here, which will just be a few days, it's like 73, 60 something now, maybe. It's supposed to be in the 80s pretty soon. But there's that green in there. This is stiff. So there's still some life in it, which means that's going to come back, which is fantastic. The others, I had three plants in around here, and uh, they got pulled up with the queen palm. I tried to get them myself, but it just didn't work out. How much do you love this alakaja? I know its leaves are all janky and damaged, but isn't it pretty? It has like an oil slick appearance. This is um, black gecko, I think. Painted black gecko. Really pretty. I haven't been able to find any of the uh, um, black coral elephant ears this year, which is really disappointing because I plant them every year and I really like them. Well, there was a place that had them, there were 40 bucks, and I'm not spending that for something that grows so incredibly fast, so. I went ahead and grabbed this guy, and it's going to give us some more effect. It'll be a little bit different, but it'll still work. I mean, look at that sheen. That shine. So cool. I really like these. So I need to get things potted up around the queen palm down there and around this adenidia. Not just the adenidia. Also, this big Alexander palm. I'm going to be putting a lot of stuff around here. You can see some soil comes out when they get put into the trucks. That just kind of happens. Not the end of the world. I'll refill it, use a nice blend. These over here, they have usually survive the winter with the palm tree in the greenhouse. These are more of those Alakaja um, Okinawa silvers, but you can see they, they don't have much of anything on them as far as variegation goes. I, th there should, I thought I saw one leaf on here that had some on it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> see that one hiding down here? All the way down here? Yeah, so it does still have some variegation on it, but it has lost a lot of it. But that's okay. These will take off as soon as I get some fresh soil in here and start planting flowers around and whatnot. They'll perk up and be happy again. Now, before I can start planting, though, some of the things I'm going to use are from the plant hall. Stuff I went out and got, I mean, not really for my birthday. What, like, there's like one or two plants where I was like, I'm going to treat myself. But the queen palm, I mean, that's that was the big splurge, which... uh. Yeah, anyway, so I'll go ahead and get started with that right now. Right here is a lovely little apple mint. This mint smells phenomenal. I mean, most of the mints do. But some mints have like an, I think, maybe it's just my nose, maybe my snooter's broken. But sometimes they have a little bit of an odd odor to them. And this one just smells sweet. Just very, very, very sweet. It's a mint, so wherever I put it, it's going to fill in and take over. It's not going here in this pot. It's just sitting there because... I, I don't know why, but that, that's where it ended up right now. And then here I have two very sad-looking little four-packs of these Amaranthus Tricolor, Amaranthus Perfecta Tricolor. 
These have been one of my favorite annuals for years, but I can rarely find them. When I was a teenager, I saw these at Walmart one year, and I bought a ton of them, and I just, I have loved them ever since. But I don't see them very often. I don't know, maybe they don't ship very well. They're pretty easy to start from seed. There have been lots of years I have just started them from seed. But you can see, I mean, this is, I almost didn't get them, because I was like, how are you going to charge full price for this? But I was, they, they were so cheap, and just, they're so pretty, and so happy, so Jamaican and Rastafarian. I had to have them. So I was really happy to find these. Like I said, I haven't seen these in years, not since I was a kid. These guys do like full sun, and they get, I think, 18 to 24 inches tall, though. I usually do have to pinch them back because they'll get kind of leggy, but once you pinch them back, they'll bush back out. And I usually keep them from flowering to keep them nice and full, too. So I'm excited to plant those. And then I picked up three of the Thai Giant Elephant Ears. They're very tiny. That doesn't matter, though. They grow really fast. They get pretty big, so not pretty big. They get massive, but what I'm saying is... Small size, doesn't matter. These, they'll take off as soon as they go in the ground. So like I said, we have one, two, three of those. I don't know who we is. I'm just talking to my phone here. And look at this adorable Saracenia. Isn't she cute? And not in focus. Where's the light? Come on, lighting. This is Saracenia Judith Hindle. A nice upright pitcher plant. And I'm going to be putting this into the bog bowl that I did not too long ago. Well, it's not a bowl. You know what I'm talking about. This little floating one right here. I mean, I already have a little one in there, but I just decided I wanted to get another one to stick in there. Something a little bit bigger for some height. And then there's this croton here. Absolutely gigantic croton. I think it's in a 15-gallon pot. I sink it in the ground. I need to sink it in a little bit further. This will be lifted in the fall and brought in as a house plant. But, you know, one of my favorite plants. And a phenomenal deal on this one as well, especially considering how big it is. It's been hard to find really big larger crotons for the last several years because of the hurricanes and everything down south. So I was thrilled to see this at the nursery and I got the last one. They've sold out very, very fast. Just look at, look at how big and colorful. Makes me so happy. Okay, and then over here I have some aquatic plants. This is a miniature cattail, which I did pick one of these up from Lowe's. It was just like roots in a bag, but again, it was cheap. So I was like, I'm just gonna go ahead and get this one while I'm at it. Tucker, I'm so sorry. And here is some pennywort, a great filler for doing aquatic arrangements. And then here is a King Tut papyrus from Proven Winners, another excellent marginal plant. Really good tall plant to have in the center of an aquatic planter. I usually put the pennywort around it. And this will grow an awful lot as soon as that gets put into the planter, which hopefully won't be too long from now. I also have a banana here. This is a Musa. Zabrina Rojo. Really lovely plant. I mean, they don't really take being moved around all that great, so it's got a little bit of recovering to do, but that is going to fill out nicely. The Zabrina Rojo, they seem to get a lot bigger, a lot faster than just the regular Zabrina. It's one of the things I like about them. This will get nice and tall. And then a golden shrimp plant, which is a Pacastachys lutea. I've done a video on these guys before. Sometimes they get grouped in with the Justicias. These are really nice plants to have around. They overwinter for me in my garage really, really well. The one I used to have, I went ahead and just let it go because that mealybug situation, it was infested. I was like, no, you can go because I thought I had cured the problem, but no. So I grabbed a new one. They get pretty big. They'll get like probably maybe three feet this season. Fill out nicely. The hummingbirds absolutely love the flowers on these. These will get a little bit taller and then the flowers open up from the inside. It's just tiny little white trumpet-shaped flowers. Like I said, the hummingbirds really like them. And then speaking of hummingbirds over here, have two of these guys. These are some of my favorites. Also an easy plant to overwinter. They go fairly dormant. These are just the compact Hamelia petens. These are the firebush. They get these little red flowers on them. And again, the hummingbirds, bees, butterflies love these. And they grow pretty fast too. They are drought tolerant, mostly evergreen. If you're above zone eight here, they're not at all perennial. Like I said, they're super easy to overwinter. And then I grabbed this beautiful salvia. It has these beautiful pink flowers that open up from this gorgeous white, kind of fluffy, hairy stalk on it. Uh, definitely a contrast in color, but the variety is called, what is this, Danielle's Dream Mexican Bush Sage. Salvia Lucantha for pink. Really pretty. I think that's going to look nice in probably an arrangement, or I'll put it into my pollinator garden. That er, like a pirate. That's a Missouri thing. Or. It's not er, it's or. Um, and look at this. Well, I guess I should get to the, <laughs> the really big one. Look at this Australian tree fern. Absolutely gigantic. It's taller than me. I'm not keeping it potted up like this. That's just temporary because I didn't want the wind blowing it around, but it is, she's big. Really big, nice size, full plant. Oh, they make me so happy. 
it can be difficult finding these in a good size, especially for a good price. Man, I hit the jackpot with this one. I really, I already have one that's much smaller, so I felt a little bit dumb going and getting another one, but this one's just so much bigger, and it barely costs more than the other one that's like maybe a fifth the size, so it's like, I'm, I gotta get it. It's so pretty. Such a lovely plant. Tricky to keep alive in the wintertime indoors, so that'll be fun, but I'm, I'm up for the challenge. Now this guy. Just an assorted cymbidium. Look at that price, though. Look at that. This orchid is absolutely massive has lots of pseudobulbs in it looks nice and healthy has three flower spikes on it and they're beautiful too i doesn't have a variety name i don't think i don't think that's on there no just says <laughs> one spike cymbidium plant i didn't even notice it said one spike on it so i got lucky there i did pick out one that had three spikes and lots and lots of pseudobulbs 20 bucks that's really good sometimes trader joe's i've seen in the past it's been a couple years here but in the past, I have seen them there for the same price, but still not this big. I mean, most of the varieties of cymbidiums that get big grow fairly quickly, so that's not that big of a deal. But it's so pretty. I love the pseudobulbs on this orchid. Not the easiest orchids for me. Sometimes they get a little bit fussy in the heat of the summer. But uh, once I get them through that, they seem to do okay. And there's different varieties. There are heat-tolerant varieties. This one not having a specific label to it, which is a huge pet peeve of mine with orchids, but since it doesn't have that specific label for what type it is, I don't know if it's a heat tolerant one, but it doesn't look to me to be one, but I don't know. I don't know what all of them look like. And you can't necessarily tell from their appearance anyways. <laughs> it's just, she's lovely. A stunning orchid, nice and big and full. All those spikes, what a great deal between that fern and this orchid. This whole area is looking good. Oh, and the um, I potted those up. I guess I don't really need to talk about that. It's going to turn into a garden tour if I'm not careful, which I need to do one this month. But the Fataja Japonica, I think that variety of spiderweb, got that one repotted, and then just the regular Fataja Japonica repotted that one as well. And then lastly, these are just some Asclepius. They're usually, this variety is normally a, an annual here, even though it's labeled as a perennial. This is a Karastavakia variety, but um, sometimes they reseed and come back every year. I like to make sure to throw a bunch of these out, but I only grabbed three so far. They're really great for like the monarchs and other pollinators, but you know, the monarchs lay their eggs on here and their babies grow up, live on them until they're ready to take off and be butterflies. So there's those and then some Persian shields, which is always a favorite of mine. I like to tuck these into various arrangements. They add a nice pop of color. They get fairly large and um, they make things stand out. The foliage on them is just gorgeous. I love Persian Shield. I think it might be one of my favorite annuals as far as fillers goes. Or not even fillers, it's gonna be a centerpiece. <laughs> I just had a mosquito fly almost right into my mouth. And then I already showed the black gecko in the beginning who's <laughs> suffering a little bit. I mean, I just brought this one home. I didn't grab the one that like looked the best. I grabbed the one that had the most babies in the pot because then those can get a little bigger and I can divide them up somewhat. But they have really nice foliage. Starts off a lighter green color and then it darkens into this nice, lovely black, which doesn't, that looks great, doesn't it? Okay, that's everything. I also have this um, ice cream banana here, which I don't think I had shown, but I got that a while ago. It's just a banana. It has really good tasting fruit. Sometimes you can get them to fruit in a single season. I don't know if I'll have any luck with that this year. It's a little bit on the small side. But what I can do is just lift it and store it in the wintertime. As long as, you know, a few feet of trunk survives, then it'll fruit next year. With this Ludia, the plant hole's done, by the way. With this Ludia, there are three different plants in here. I'm thinking about dividing it up. I guess four different plants there. You gonna be my helper, Tuck? Be my helper. Thanks, bud because I need two of them. What I'm gonna be doing here in just a little bit is I'm going to be clearing the space out. The big Adenidia palm goes right here in the center, and then I do something with, there's two big planters on each side here, and I wanna do an Alakaja Ludia in each one of those. I think that that gold, the, the veining that they have will stand out nicely. Should do well with the amount of sun that's over here and everything, I think that'll look good. But I have to handle all of this first. And part of handling that first is I need to go ahead and start potting things up. So I'm going to go ahead actually and um, let's go to Lowe's because I need to get some potting soil. So I I have enough, I think, to get a few things done, but I really, I want to be able to just like take the next few days and just 
plant away. I don't want to have to go anywhere. So I'm going to go to Lowe's and get some potting soil. I need a few sun impatients. Hopefully they will have those. I am at a pool salt, so I should go to Walmart, but I really don't want to. But maybe I'll do that too. I don't know. Let's, let's go ahead and do that. Here. <laughs> he gets it. My Walmart decided to go here first. Why am I talking in little chunks? Because they have the drive through area where you can just load your stuff up, so that's makes more sense. Already went through there though, and there's uh, no potting soil, so just getting salt. <laughs> just one little baby bird of paradise left. It's not usually a ton to see. My Walmart, they don't change their selection very often. Uh, lots of hostas, creeping jennies that look bad. Let's see here. I do need some stuff for a hanging basket, but I don't think I'm probably going to find that here. A few random house plants over here. Kind of cute. They have these like pre made tropical assortments. I don't know about that. $60. What do you think? Seems kind of steep. <laughs> There's 75 over here. They have racks and racks of these hydrangeas. Tons of them. There's roses on them too. They're really, really pretty. Can't get quite far enough away to give you a full view, but they're wrapped in plastic. There's not a ton to see with those right now anyways. Hey, Clarence. I don't need any of these things though. And more clearance. Things are looking kind of shabby today here at Walmart. They really let themselves go. And Mother's Day weekend just ended, which is a huge, crazy, busy time for the nursery, so I'm not too surprised by that. Oh, citrus and calamondin. These were so hard to find for a few years. I'm glad they're becoming popular again. Lemon. Tiny little guys. Oh, that's a cute little lime tree. What kind of lime? Key lime? Ooh. I was debating getting a lime, but really, like, for a few dollars more, I can get these from a local nursery and bigger, better, healthier plants. And more clearance. This isn't bad at all. Buck 99 for some super tunias. I mean, these are the vistas. They grow so wonderfully that... I mean, they'll recover so fast. These don't even look that bad, really. And they have a whole bunch of diplodinias also. They don't look terrible. Some hanging baskets. Okay. Grabbed a few supertunias. I don't care if they look shabby. They're such vigorous growers. They'll be fine. So, I mean, basically 50% off. That's a great deal. And I needed a couple more, so that worked out well. Like I said, being shabby, no big deal. That's just fine. It, lots of nice looking new stuff over here. I feel like I've just been dragging Walmart's Ultimates here. That wasn't my intention, just, I mean, kind of happens. But there's lots of stuff that looks good here too. I don't understand $75 for these though. Because, you know, these little Robolinis retail like 15 bucks, And then geraniums and stuff, that's a heck of a markup. I don't get that. See, factor in wholesale, that'd be much, much, much cheaper. I guarantee you, they're not spending more than a few dollars on those Robolinis. What's going on over here? Hey, hey, hey guys, how you doing? About that codex, though. Look at that. This looks okay. $14, too. That's pretty good. I don't know what color they are. And I kind of, I like the ones that aren't cut, ones that are grafted, but so it's a great deal. Not a bad price on the succulents either. Oh, this is looking nice. Lots of texture, lots of color. Um, no, those are $30. That's, that's crazy. <laughs> Why? It took 17 minutes to check out. It happened last time I was here too. That's because people were buying all their groceries in the garden department. Look at, these bags are covered. 
covered in rodent droppings. I think I'm going to have a hard time finding six bags that are in decent shape. The poop, whatever, I have hand sanitizer in the car, but have these are busted open. Mike, look at that. This is disgusting. I went from being like, I need to make sure to say something positive. Now, Walmart, you done today. You nasty. Okay, six bags. That took a while. Kind of destroyed that pallet there, but it was necessary. Garden soil. Went ahead and went with the expert brand. There's a donut sitting over here. That's probably one of the reasons that there's mice all over the place, or rats, or whoever did that. There we go. Now, you can go to Lowe's. I will say, though, Walmart is very good about marking the prices down on their plants, which is nice. It's a nice assortment of hanging baskets, good prices, and it's not the cashier's fault that it took forever to check out. There we go. I think it's good to say something positive <laughs> when you're ranting a little bit. But it's just, I draw the line at poop. That, that, no. Ew. But, all is forgiven, because I'm at Lowe's, finally. Oh, they got some pretty Exoras here. Lovely flowers on these guys. Aren't those pretty? <sighs> Everything feels good again. All is right with the world. Gorgeous Gerber daisies. Wonder what their sun and patient selections like. Also, I need to remember I'm trying to find something that's lime green while I'm here. I'm trying to talk a little bit more softly because I kind of started to lose my voice from the weekend. These are really pretty. These verbenas. Purple bicolor verbena. I like those. So if I've been a little bit quiet, that's why. These are beautiful. Veronica, I love Veronica's. Can you guys remember the last time I was here, there was that white hibiscus with the pink center? I've been thinking about her a lot since then. Like, I think I have a crush on that one and I need to find it. I don't think these are it though. The Tropic Escapes, I think they were like the those Hollywood ones or the, what are they called, Garden Debut maybe? can't remember. Is that this one? Maybe? Chatty Kathy. Nope. Hey Kathy, how you doing? Spelled different, but still. Thinking of you. 20% off select hibiscus. That's cool. Ooh. These are gigantic. Look how big these are. Beautiful. These are the Picasso Calla Lilies. So many beautiful succulents. Quick look at some house plants, see how they're doing. Nice silver pothos over here. Looking okay. A few yellow leaves, but not too bad. Good hanging baskets, string of bananas, pretty. Some Portulacaria afra. Looking good. Oh, it's Dracania. Look at you flowering. Marble Queen. Ooh. A nice full plant. Look at really big. Wow, this is some big spathophyllums. Gigantic monsters. And Vandas that look, those need to be clearanced. I was hoping to find some of the neon pothos in a smaller pot, but I don't think that's going to happen. That's wishful thinking. I don't even see it that often in the larger pots, so I'm probably going to be a minute till those are common enough that they're in the Little pots. Bromeliads are cute. Okay. Potting soil. And this is always the biggest challenge when I come here is finding a flatbed. Actually, like, edited out a small rant. Not small. Like, five minute long rant from the last time I was here because I was here for a long time. Mostly just trying to find a cart. Lots of clearance. A whole bunch of it. Tons. You can see gotten a lot of stuff sold and moved out of here from Mother's Day weekend. Big gardening weekend. Hey, you guys are pretty. I love tassel ferns. Oh, they're gorgeous. Tassel ferns. That's these guys. So pretty. They have a nice, thick, glossy foliage on them. Oh, I see a cart. It's outside. Gotta go back out. So much easier when you have a flatbed. I don't know if you remember last time I was here, I couldn't find one, so my cart was just... Ended up having to leave, couldn't get everything I needed because I couldn't find a cart. I found a pot. I need two of these. That Robolini and the Foxtail that were in the video earlier, those need new pots. And these are really good prices. 23 inch, and they're plastic, but they look okay. 
that I didn't even see this last time I was here. I got this for my big spindle palm, but it was more of a sandstone kind of color. I like this brown a lot better. Wish I'd seen it. I just found this sitting underneath a bunch of plants over there. So I don't know where, where, where are you? It was just sitting under there. I don't see it anywhere on the shelves over here. And they have the little sandstone ones and the little brown ones, but I'm not seeing it in the larger size. So I guess the foxtail doesn't really need to go into a new pot. I can just lift that, throw some fresh soil in there, and that might work. <laughs> Look at the size of these ostrich ferns. They're gigantic. Now these I have planted in my garden. I picked up a bunch of the ostrich, the king ostrich ferns from here not too long ago. That price, I mean, you're getting a big root mass. So in theory, they'll spread faster, but eh, I don't know. And I've also been thinking about this vine ever since I was here last time. This is that Dan Hinckley uh, Chinese hydrangea, and it says on here that it only gets 10 to 15 feet. You know, I put that Virginia creeper on my fence, and I'm thinking this may be better. Because it's not going to go out of control. Virginia creepers, really, they'll take over. Oh, there she is. There's the starstruck. I don't know if I like it anymore. <laughs> that ever happen? to you and you see something and you don't get it and keep thinking about it and then you go back and you're like, oh, I'm probably going to get it and you're like, nah, nah, meh. Something smells phenomenal over here. It, oh, <laughs> duh, roses. I'll go ahead and get it. Those sprinter boxwoods. Gosh, those are cute. Ooh, scotch brooms. Ever planted these? They're pretty cool. Hardy zones five and up. They are a full sun pretty drought tolerant and they get these really pretty flowers on them and they have nice looking kind of like wispy stick like foliage when the leaves come off these don't look great but the nine bark this particular variety the darts of gold gorgeous plants just not a little shabby here at the nursery but they look beautiful in the garden not seeing any sun impatience which is kind of shocking or even any coleus, like a nice lime green coleus. Not seeing that either. <laughs> She's thirsty. Relatable, same. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I wonder if they have the black corals. Those have been really hard to find. I can't find, I think I already said that earlier in the vlog. I'm going to find them this year. They have the Royal Hawaiian Diamond Head, which is similar. It doesn't get as dark and glossy. And then these other dark ones, you know, sometimes with the black corals, they still have a kind of a green sheen to them. So you have to have a tag, and they just say elephant ear. Look this, Japanese beach thern. Thern? Fern. Beach fern. Hardy zones four and up. I really like these. You'd be great in like a woodland type setting. Uh, maybe? I do need two of them though. The rest of these aren't looking all that hot. Alright, I guess that'll do. And this is the coleus I had in mind. I just figured I'd find it smaller, a little bit cheaper, but that works. I should have picked some up when I was at the greenhouse last weekend where things were wholesale. That was that was dumb of me. I forgot. Should have grabbed those there. I even had them on my list and I just was an oversight. Really like these hookers. Yeah, still not seeing any sun impatience. Again, something else that was on my list that I just forgot to grab. I forgot, I probably should have shown the label for this. It's the guacamole coral bells. But isn't that foliage just fantastic? It's so bright and vibrant. Okay, I need those sun impatience. So, ran by Home Depot. It's right next to Lowe's. So I may as well stop in. I also need to pick up some impatience, and then these eight packs are three fifty. Like that's a pretty good deal. Get forty of them for the same price what I'd be paying for for a, uh, um, you know, six packs and a flat. Problem though, is I can't decide which color to get. I want to combine pink and orange, but what shade of pink? See, there's this lighter pink which does look kind of the same, and then the darker pink. And I know you shouldn't put them together because it clashes or whatever, but guys, can I can I just get them both, please? Because I just, I can't make up my mind. See, light pink, dark pink. I don't know what to do. But here's the orange. It's much more of a light, creamy orange in person. I don't know. Okay. Yeah, I know. You're right. Light pink it is. 
because the light pink does have some of the darker in there, so I think it's a good compromise. They don't have the orange in these packs, so I guess that was a big waste of time. At least I got the pink ones for now. Okay, I have never seen a Sun and Patience that looks quite like this. I think that this might be a New Guinea. It's been mislabeled, or maybe it's a variety I'm just not familiar with, but I don't... looks a lot like a New Guinea. Which are very similar, but also different. Not something to stick in full sun, depending on your climate, that is. I don't like any of the sun impatience they have. They're all just colors that not what I'm looking for. <sighs> it's morning the next day. My allergies when I got home were just terrible. I was like sneezing and coughing, my eyes were burning, so I was like, yeah, that's enough of the being outdoor stuff for today, and it got really hot too, it was around 90, which is great, I actually really enjoyed that. But I did get a few things done, because there's too much to do to not be getting things done. Hey Tuck, where you, okay, bye buddy. That's all recycling and stuff over there. But I started to get the stairways over here cleaned up so that I can start positioning the plants the way they need to go over there. And I've begun dealing with this mess over here. I moved the Adenidia palm, as you can see right here, to the center. This big blue pot that's broken into pieces used to be the centerpiece here and I don't know if you were here last summer then you may remember I <laughs> really went through a lot trying to find the right pot for this Adenidia palm because I want it to be something that was lightweight easy to move around and didn't look just like a cheesy plastic terracotta pot not if there's anything wrong with that sometimes people like that and that looks great but I wanted to make sure it was a tone that would kind of go okay with these bluey aqua colored pots you can see the glaze is aging in an interesting way on this one so I think that that worked out okay, because I don't, I can probably gloat and cement that pot back together, but for now, this is what I'm doing. And then there's all of this mess here on the ground, because I had all my plants stacked up over here, things that I hadn't planted yet, which also, I didn't, can't believe I need to say this, but there seemed to be some confusion in my last plant haul. I don't just go buy plants, set them on the ground, and walk away from them forever. I do plant them. I, that's an odd thing to assume, but... Just putting it out there that I have been gathering my palette to get working. The nurseries, a lot of nurseries, not I was going to say around here, but a lot of them get in their plants and you, you got to get them then because a lot of the times they don't restock those plants. So since there are a lot of containers to be done, a lot of projects to get done this summer, and lots and lots and lots of space that needs to be filled in here, stones to be removed and all those things, I have to gather my materials. So that's what happened there. And then now that the robin's nest is out of here, I've taken all of most of mostly the shade plants and put them over here. I do need to move that lavender. That's gonna get way too much water when I'm watering everything else. Most of what's over here, things are gonna be planted out front, more than likely. But so I have things kind of sectioned off a little bit. So I'm going to grab a <laughs> so I need to grab a broom and a rake and start cleaning all that stuff up. There's a lot of leaves back here as well. That bamboo shelf is from an old tiki bar that broke and the manufacturer sent me a new one and I saved the shelf it was full of ants so when I picked it up it was between these two pots I picked it up there were ants around I just thought ugh and threw it because I didn't feel like being covered in ants it's a fun story there for you so I need to tidy I need to wake up a little bit more before I get going don't I and what I'm thinking about doing here with these two side pots is using this Alakaja Ludia. It has that kind of goldish yellow veining in it, which goes really nice to contrast that green. I like the way that looks with the aqua color on the pots, and uh, there's two in here. I think there's actually three. I talked about that a little bit earlier. So I'm going to try and divide that up and put it in both pots. So first I'm going to tidy, and then I'll do that and start planting some things up in here and try and get this looking nice again. Look at all that. Gross. Also, <laughs> people really enjoyed making fun of my little rake last time it was here in the videos, but I gotta tell you, it's nifty. I can get into all the little crevices and whatnot. So I have a big rake too. This isn't my exclusive rake, but it's nifty for tight little areas like back there. Also, loving this tarp. So nifty before I would have tried to like get this into a like a yard waste bag but this I can just burrito it up pick it up and drop it into the yard waste and pull it back open everything falls. it's so nifty 
back to the task at hand, though. And the extension cord normally goes behind everything. That's a whole long story. It won't be like that. So uh, here's what's going on. I'm <laughs> losing my lighting, so I gotta get moving so that you can actually see what's happening here. I went ahead, filled these up with mostly the miracle Grow potting soil. I put in a few handfuls of that expert potting mix or any type of compost would work too. That expert soil is great because it has lots of organics in it. It's going to help enrich that an awful lot. And then I've also added a hefty amount of this Espoma Biotone as well as sand. So I'll blend this together. That's going to create a much more rich potting mix than just using the miracle Grow. But I mentioned splitting that in half, the Ludia, using one on each side. I just had an idea. Might be a bit much, so just bear with me. But these two Bird of Paradise right here, I was thinking about keeping them in these pots. It's not going to work out, though. It's too windy through here. The wind blows through very strong, and it just kind of tatters these leaves up. So they're not doing great over here. So what I'm thinking, normally these go on each side of there's a little path over here. And they go on each side creates a little privacy from this open gap here but I'm going to pot up bamboo where those normally go I guess I should show you there's a couple black pots over here so I'm going to put bamboo in those a clumping bamboo so that's going to handle that privacy thing so I'm thinking about doing one of these bird of paradise in each one of those pots and then doing a ludia right in front maybe I'll just do it hi hello from my shadow Maybe I'll just do it, and then we can cut back, see how it looks. If it doesn't look good, and try something different. But I think it's going to look nice. Oh, and just to clarify, I already moved one of the Bird of Paradise over. The I'm having a couple of queen palms brought in to put in this pot. My palm tree dealer that I talked about earlier in the video uh, has a truck down in Florida that should be showing up today, I think. And I asked him to throw a couple 15 or 20 gallon queen palms in there because those will go better in these pots, they're really easy to store in the winter time. It just makes more sense for the Paradise to Wind. I already explained all of that. The local nurseries have queen palms this year, but they're like 100 to $200 for really small ones, which queen palms, they grow like crazy. I know that it costs a lot of money to ship them up and everything, but I mean, I'm getting mine brought up for really, really cheap. So I'm going to go with that because wholesale. So it makes a lot more sense. The 200 bucks for a little bitty queen palm doesn't make this this was less than that. It's wholesale, so it's not really fair to compare, but still, I mean, come on, right? So that's what's going on there. I think that the Bird of Paradise will look a lot better down over here. Just accidentally went on a little bitty rant there. Didn't mean to do that. Just kind of happens sometimes. Oh, and the other thing that this plan changes is these don't need to be so full of potting swell. And as far as all the mess is concerned, I have a whole thing I'm doing over here. I'm going to do in a separate video. So for now, the rest of this video, I'm just planting things. I want to clean the area up as much as possible too, but I'm not um, like going to stage everything. That'll be done after I'm done planting everything later in another video. So you can get the soil out and get going. Oh, losing that light that's happening so fast. That doesn't, that's not going to work. Kind of works. Okay, so there's a quarter one fruticasa in here. The red sister, bird of paradise. I've trimmed it up. This will grow and flush out with new growth, no problem. And then the alakaja. I've been slowly working the soil out from the roots so I can get a good idea of how well I'm going to be able to divide this. I want to make sure that each one of these can hold on to as much root as possible. This will transplant a lot better. Generally, anytime I've divided up an alakaja, it they generally like drop their foliage and throw a little bit of a hissy fit for a while, but then they root out some more and then they boop, pop right back. So. I just still want to make sure that there's a nice root structure attached to each one of these growths when I do it. And you can see in here that these are two separate plants. I don't see anything connecting the two of them. And when that's the case, I can almost put my finger all the way through in between them. I'll usually just very slowly untangle them from each other. Otherwise, I would take a really sharp clean knife and just make a cut right through. These haven't formed any kind of a bulb or anything. so which is typical, that can take alakajas a few years to do that. And it also makes dividing them up much easier. See, they just pull right apart. Like I said, kind of trying to untangle them very carefully as I'm going. Prevent as much root breakage as possible, tr transplant a lot faster that way. But ultimately, see that? Real easy. Okay, rather abrupt change of direction. I decided I don't think that the alakajas, after all this, I don't think they're really going to work in here. Not like that. The structure is just too similar to the Bird of Paradise. 
And I had originally contemplated putting alacadres with the genders, and I was like, well, I don't think that's really going to work because their color is so similar. Guys, I'm so sorry about the lighting. I can't really help it because it's the only time I have that I can do this right now. So um, what I've decided to do, I'm putting a ginger back here. It's just a division from one that I overwintered in the garage. Tuck that back there. It's also going to throw a fit from being transplanted, but it'll bounce back just like everything else will in a few weeks. So I'm going to do that. The ginger right here, the palm tree will be the other direction. And then I'm going to take these alacajas, like so, and um, do one just behind the trunk on each side. I think that'll work. You can see I got a lot of roots on these guys. Managed to save a lot of the roots on them, I should say. Got a little bit greedy and I tore a couple more divisions, which I haven't potted up yet, so I just kind of tucked them into some soil. I just got interrupted by a robot calling me about a very important message about my health insurance. So anyways, I tucked those guys in, their roots need to stay damp, and I'm gonna, yeah, back to work. So now that that's handled, I moved the red sister to the other side, because I'm gonna want that on each side. I'm doing everything in this pot first, and then I'll mirror it over there for a final reveal. But having that pink, I think on the inside, that darker color is gonna pull the eye in, which is what I want. The ginger, like I said, it's gonna throw a fit. Every, everything's gonna be a little unhappy for a couple weeks. Not everything, but the things I divided up will be. And then I tucked a croton in over here, which, Looks nice. And then I want some flowers. So, dragon's wing begonia. Remember in one of the last videos, I don't remember which one, I picked up a whole bunch of these hanging baskets on clearance at Walmart. And this is why. Because now I have, I mean, though, a little rough looking. That's all right. Super cheap. Really cheap. Not as cheap as they should have been. But those will just pull right out of here fairly easily like so. I'm going to pull out some of the lower leaves because those are not going to um, allow for a lot of air circulation. And things might get a little bit wet, so any leaves that aren't looking good down there I'll pull apart. And then I'm going to go ahead and toss this in. I'm trying to make sure it's mostly centered, as centered as it can possibly be. It's nice. Some color in there. Now I need a trailer. Okay, it's a little while later. I had company over and I just wasn't able to get it done, but I'm, I'm done now. It's just, it's getting dark. So, there we go, all done. What do we think? I like it. The bromeliads are in here just kind of temporarily. This pot in the center is mostly roots, so it's really hard to plant anything large in here, which is why it kind of worked out well having the elephant ears on each side as divisions as well as the ginger, because I could kind of cram them in. Uh, I did have a couple of little begonias I tucked in here to mirror the begonias that I put into the pots on the sides. Then over the front, I have a Supertunia Vista bubblegum, which I, I just watered, so it's a little bit wilty from the pressure of the water. I did that in each of the blue pots, and then in the center, this is the Silverberry. Supertunia Vista Silverberry. I originally had it with pink all the way across, and I decided I wanted something a little bit different in the middle. I like the idea of having white over here because at nighttime, white illuminates. Same thing with anything with variegation in it. Kind of brightens things up a little bit. So that helps illuminate the area. That's, that's all it is. So like I said, as far as like fixing the whole area up, that's not happening in this video. But my main thing was just I wanted to get started on the planters. And I did that. These are the ones I'm usually the most excited about getting done. It's going to take them a few weeks to kind of pop up and get back to life. Particularly the things that had or were divisions but otherwise it's all good the bird of paradise i think are going to like it back here it's just about the right amount of light for pretty much everything that's over here the bromeliads aren't like i said are not potted in there they're just sitting there for now i'm probably going to stick a heliconia there in the middle i just need to find one that they're kind of hard to come by but i think that would look nice and add a real tropical flair to the middle I might be able to keep the bromeliads. I kind of have to watch the sunlight. I think it might be way too sunny there for this type of bromeliad at least. So if I want bromeliads there, I'm going to have to switch them out with something that likes a lot more sunlight than these do. And then real quick, as far as the plants are concerned that are in here, the begonia, the petunias, those are all going to be treated as annuals. I'm, I can overwent the... overwent. <laughs> I could overwinter the dragon's wings. I've done it before. I have a few actually that I overwintered last year. 
three zero over winter, so if I decide to do that, I will. But everything that's in these, aside from the petunias in the fall time, will be lifted. Then uh, these two right here will be repotted back into just like black nursery cans. The bird of paradise, I didn't even unpot them. They're still in their nursery cans. And then I'll take them inside to overwinter them. So I'm not treating these as annuals. So it's not like when the fall comes around, those are just going to die. No, they'll come inside. They'll be okay. I think they look really nice together too. I wish it were a little bit earlier because the lighting's kind of wonky, but they're pretty. I'm really, really enjoying how that looks. And over here was an area that I wanted to get done this video, but I don't think I'm going to be able to because I have to pot things up and everything. It's going to take a while, and it's Friday night. This video comes out tomorrow, so I need to get editing. I'm losing sunlight here. But this is the assorted tropical planter I threw together. I did want to say something about this one also, similar to the other one. Something I had left out of that video was that I just fell down a little bit, but it's okay. Um, yes, this is crowded, but it's the annuals that are crowded. I don't really worry about crowding annuals that much. And it's particularly these petunias. I know they look squished in there, but those will start to come over the side. So it's really just the begonia and the dusty miller in there. There's those crotons that are in there. When this starts to grow a lot more, I can just pull those right out and pop them up on their own. So they're going to be fine. This is just, you know, for several months. It's an outdoor planter. It's not meant to... Uh, look like this at all times. It looks kind of uneven because that begonia piece is broken and I should just cut it off, but it's not broken enough for it to die. And it's pretty, so I've just sort of left it like that for now. But yeah, like I said, just with the annuals, especially since it's mostly annuals that are going to come trailing over the sides, I'm not worried about overcrowding. It's going to be totally fine. Oh, hey! Hey, what you doing? What you doing? I know. Yeah. You want to go inside? Someone's in there, huh? Yeah? Okay, you're gonna... Alright, Toby. Really hogging the shot here. They had so much fun. You guys had a play date, didn't you? You had a play date. You, you did. You had fun. This is almost all recycling over here. That's a... You guys know. I'm gonna be using those other pots for repotting. And so that's gonna go out with the recycling tonight. You such a good boy. Yeah, they had a great time playing with their friends today. Their friend... And their friend, Gotti, he's a pit bull, found a new love for the fountain. He was, well, probably playing it right now. I got some video of him playing with the water. It was, it was so stinking adorable. Yeah, that was fun, wasn't it, Toby? You got to go swimming with your friend. So next week, I told you I'm going to be fixing that area up. This bowl's going back. This is a watering bowl. I'm going to I turn it into a fountain. And the dogs drink out of it. That goes back there. I pile up my anthyrums around here. All these cords get folded up into that pot right there. More pots to move around. More things to put. It's just, you know, it's always something. But I'm going to get this corner done to finish rounding off this whole area right here. What I'm most excited about, though, is getting the palm trees potted up around the pool here. The two mule palms. And then I have to go pick up the two queen palms. They should have come up on the truck today. So I'll pick those up on Monday. And get everything done with the petunias and sweet potato vines and whatnot. Oh, my allergies. I have a spot on my face that started to itch and it has swollen up. I don't know if it's a bug bite or what it is, but my throat and my eyes, it's just, ugh, no fun. I did take some Flonase. That helped an awful lot, but it's been several hours, so that's worn off. Also, really, neither here nor there. It's supposed to rain this weekend, so that should help clear things up an awful lot. Y'all said you liked longer videos last weekend, so here's another long one for you. But does make it harder to put videos out during the week though so I might have to alternate every other weekend with the long vlogs because it's just if I spend all my time doing the one thing it's hard to make time for that you get it I'm sure you know what I'm saying <clears throat> that's why there was only one other video out this week which I think came out really well I accidentally filmed that one part in slow motion which I oftentimes do on purpose the reason it was an issue this time was because I was talking throughout the, that whole thing where it was slow motion there's no audio when you record in slow motion not on my camera if there were, it would be all distorted. So it was more a matter of like, uh-oh, I hope I remember to say everything I was saying while I was planting these things. Things like, I know it's crowded, but it's okay because they're annuals and trailers. Oh, and if there were more root space, I would have taken another croton and divided that up and put one on each side. So we're going croton, cordelin, croton, croton, cordelin, croton. Not enough space in that pot to do that. But hey, if you'd like to, don't forget to hit that like button. Helps the video a lot, helps the channel a lot, makes a big difference. So thank you. And subscribe as well, because I upload multiple times a week. And hit that notification bell, that way you know when new videos come out. There will definitely be updates on these guys on my social media. I use Instagram way more than anything else. You can follow me on there, and I'll follow you back. It's a lot of fun being plant nerds together. Oh, and how could I forget? Thanks, guys, for 10,000 subscribers. I'm probably going to try and do a dedicated video to that. But I still want to say thank you. Everybody's so kind and so awesome. And it's just, 
a blast having y'all as part of my little plant family. I, it's great. Thank you. I'm still like kind of in shock over it, so I don't really know what to say. I'm sorry. Other than the obvious. Hope everybody's doing well, having a great day, a great life. Everything's going beautifully for you. And as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.